So upon landing on our home page, uh, you can see that you can message and stuff. But let's go back to the login. Uh, so um, you're supposed to land on this page here where you're able to log in by entering your credentials. But right now we don't have any, so let's sign up. So I'll bring you to the registration page here where you can put any username and then any password and then register for our account. It'll currently take you to the home page, but let's pretend a um, created account. Uh, so it'll try to bring you back into the login page where you can enter your credential and actually log into the home page. And if you forgot, it would um, we wanted to implement this in the future where it'll email you um, how to reset your password. Uh, but right now, let's just log in. So these aren't actual accounts, but it'll let you log in for now. And then it'll take you to the home page where you can start commenting. So you could just be like, hello. And then it'll post it down here. Uh, this is also live, so let's get another window up. So let's get here. Yeah, see, so both of them showed up. Uh, everyone could see all the messages. Uh, anytime someone sends a message, you can also enter emojis. So there's like many different types of emojis here where you could express your feelings. And if you would like to like some kind of comment down here, you could press like. Currently, if you press like, um, it will increase the like by one, but all the buttons increase the like by one. Uh, we would like to implement in the future where only um, it will keep track of each individual one. So right now it thinks that they're all the same. Uh, also on the home page, you can go see your friend's info. So here's my friend. Um, so currently these two buttons don't work. Um, okay, and then you could just read up on his information. Yeah, his the friend button is like right here. Uh, currently a file upload does not work. Um, you can still upload a file, but it doesn't go anywhere. And now I'm um, gonna show off our um, second comment or DMs. Um, so you can enter a username and then like hello. So this one works a little different than the homepage one, where if you so if you type in okay, you could type in and create a comment, but you have to uh, move away from that. Like click on a different one first, and then come back here and then it'll pop up. But for this one, you could keep track of who's been um, talking. So hello, Let's see, these are some test cases. Uh, so I'm going to do testing two, comment here, and then let's go back. So both of them have to reload, and I see it popped up here. It's popped up here. So people who aren't online currently, they could see the message like later on, because uh, it's going to be there. And then for the future, um, we also want to have like uh, DMs where you have to sign up first to, in order to DM. And I'll also be showing off the profile page. So profile page, just standard. You could edit your profile. Hello, my name is John. Yeah, and then you could edit your occupation, Buffalo. Start day May 2020. Yeah, you don't have to fill out everything, but yeah, you could fill out the majority. Uh, yeah. So I'll update your information if you click on the pencil button. And I think that's pretty much it. Backend technologies. We use Node, which holds a lot of server side frameworks we use to create our backend. And then for our database, we use MongoDB. We specifically use Mongoose and have a models folder where we define our schemas and a routes folder to define the endpoints of our schemas with the respective get slash post endpoint. We use Express as our backend framework to point to the URLs of our API routes. And with socket IO, we emit backend button presses 
back to our front end to display changes such as posts and likes. So with our application, we decided to use React um, and Node to develop um, the server side. We used React as a framework and Node to handle um, just, um, HTTP protocol. And we also use Bootstrap to handle all the styling for our web page. And as you can see right here, we are presented with a login page where a user, an existing user can enter a username, password, and they click login. If they don't have an account yet, they can choose to sign up, which will redirect them to the register page where they can type in their username and password. And if they already have an account, they can be re redirected to the login page. This styling is utilizes Bootstrap. And when you when a user decides to post a comment, it's also, we also use Bootstrap here as well. So as you can see, we are able to click these tabs, which will redirect us to different web pages. And we used Re React for this part. So we use React as a framework, not, not only to structure our web application, but also to handle all the linking. Upon reflecting on this project at its completion, there were a few things that became abundantly clear, um, particularly how hard it can actually be to build a web application from scratch, particularly from a distance. Given the less than ideal circumstances that reared their heads around the, terminal, around the end of phase one, um, it became very clear how challenging this was gonna be, particularly if a group was not well organized. Um, while this wasn't particularly a challenge for us due to the rise of the internet and uh, a plethora of different ways to communicate, it became very clear that if we hadn't, um, if we hadn't developed this really good organization strategy in the very beginning, this project could have gone far worse than it did. Um, though, with that said, one of the things that I absolutely think that would have been a very good idea to implement at the very beginning was to create clear jobs and duties for particular people that would have lasted throughout all three phases, particularly somebody who was in charge of direct messaging from start to finish across all three phases, somebody who was in charge of logins from start to finish across all three phases, because that very much could have helped um, or prevented rather people from stepping on each other's feet in a way. And what I mean by that is people working on the exact same thing without really even knowing about it which can and very easily happen, particularly when you're not doing in-person meetings every day. Another thing that became very clear um, upon the completion, or rather towards the, the end of this project, was that decisions that you make early on have a way of creeping back up on you later down the line, particularly if they weren't well thought out. Um, for example, you could choose to use any library that seems particularly a good decision at the time and then at the end of the day if you really didn't look into that library and what its particular strengths and weaknesses were it could end up being that this library is just not like well optimized to accomplish the things that you intended it um, you intended to have it accomplished and that can be particularly challenging down the line like on a project once you've already implemented it because if you want to switch it could be additional hours of coding that you would have to redo in order to get a new library functioning within your code so it's incredibly important to really do your homework in the beginning and pick out software that is going to work um, well, for the duration of the project. 
Um, and on top of that, organization is absolutely key in this project. Um, having regular discussions, what we found instead of our project, was very good at keeping people on top of the individual tasks that they were assigned at any particular week and really kind of lit fires underneath people who may have been lagging behind or were struggling or really just made it clear to everybody else who was struggling that way. Our resources could be allocated in the most appropriate manners to help out people who were struggling. And ultimately that was one of the key aspects that allowed our group to be as successful as it was throughout the duration of our project.